Hi, I'm Dan Cox. Uh, we've got a special guest today in the box, Jason Sago, UFC fighter. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Now, obviously, you suffered a, an injury that kept you out of the uh, out of the the bout there, the UFC in Poland. Man, it's got to be devastating. How are you doing? I'm all right. You know, I'm recovering. I, I can show you. I got this cast nice hard fiberglass cast on right now so that's helping protect it right uh for at least for the next few weeks and then i'll eventually get a uh, moon boot on and then i'll have that on for eight weeks it's just a very long road to recovery with this injury yeah now for those that don't know you actually had a problem did you completely tear uh the yeah it was complete rupture complete rupture and it was off of nothing you know it was something anybody does i was just stepping back you know it was off of like a simple basic movement and you know i think what it had to do with was like the years and years of training and just bouncing around and slowly micro tears start to form in the achilles tendon and then one day i just stepped back too quickly and then you hear like a really big pop and you could hear it on the uh the video i was i was filming the session at the time and you hear like a gunshot it's like bang yeah. and that's my achilles tendon snapping and uh, I was extremely painful, didn't feel good. And uh, I went to, I was in, I was in a little, little bit of denial because I was like, oh, I'll go home and sleep it off. I just popped some Tylenol 3s and oh. I thought I was going to be okay in the morning. I thought maybe I could just sleep it off. But I woke up and I'm like, I got to go to the emergency room. So my girlfriend took me to the emergency room. The doctor took a, a quick look at it and he said, it's completely ruptured. We got to go in for surgery. You know, that has to be... You know, and, I, and I've suffered some pretty bad injuries, but it's never kept me out of something as big as, you know, a UFC fight like that. But mentally, I mean, that, that's the hardest part of the injury, I, I would assume, is just accepting and moving forward, you know, with it. Yeah, I'm still dealing with that right now. You know, when you, you get ready for a fight, you know, I put everything aside for those eight weeks and I'm doing my fight camp, I'm training, getting beat up, I spend less time with my family, less time with my friends, I'm dieting, so there's a lot of stuff goes into it. I had planned uh, to go on a little vacation after the fight, you plan on receiving that income from the fight, whether you win or lose, you still get your show purse, if you win you get another nice bonus too, so it's financially a setback, it's a career setback being out for more than eight months. No, uh, it's a pretty hard hit for sure. Yeah. Now, your fighting style, I, and I love it, by the way, extremely aggressive, great on the ground. Your takedowns are extremely uh, effective. I, if I'm not mistaken, you're an 80 plus percent uh, success rate on your takedowns. What is your What is your base? I mean, did you start as a wrestler? No, I started, um, actually I started, well, like I first started, was introduced to Muay Thai is what I started out with, but I quickly transitioned to Jiu-Jitsu. I always loved Jiu-Jitsu because when you do like hard sparring in Jiu-Jitsu, you don't have to deal with any head trauma. So it's a lot uh, healthier for your body to be involved with a sport like Jiu-Jitsu versus Muay Thai or just straight boxing. So I've always done Muay, Muay Thai though. I mean, I lived in Thailand for a little bit and always uh, trained and competed in Muay Thai, but I've always really loved Jiu-Jitsu. Well, it's, I mean, it's obviously helped you, and you must, it's a natural ability that you have to be able to get in and put the guys on their backs. Uh, and, you know, in MMA, obviously, that's something that uh, if you can control where the fight goes, if you could dictate yeah. that, because, again, your takedown defense is, is stellar as well. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I have a lot of great coaches too in terms of like the wrestling. Chris Prickett, uh, he's more probably one of the the main guys that has helped me with uh, with wrestling. He's uh, he's multi time national Canadian wrestling champion, and as well as here in Prince Edward Island, we got Matt McGrath. He runs an awesome wrestling program uh, here on the island where where I live. So I got two really high level uh, wrestling guys coming and, and putting their knowledge together, and I'm just drilling and training out whatever they they show me. I got to ask you, what was it like when you got the call to come up to the UFC? I was huge because, you know, I think 
when everyone turns pro in MMA, they, I think they want to, you know, climb the ranks, you climb the ladder and stuff like that. And the, the goal is to get to the top of the ladder, which would be entering the UFC. So when I got the call, uh, you know, Joe Silva called up my manager, my manager called me. It was huge. It was absolutely massive. I think I was nine and one at the time. All my wins were by finishes. Um, so it was it was amazing to get that call to reach that that next level. So then it's like you reach the top of the ladder, and then when you get to the UFC, then you start at the bottom again. Then you got to climb your way back up. Yeah. No. What is there a lot of truth to the UFC jitters? Everybody speaks about it. You've got guys that that were champs in other uh, organizations, Strike Force, Pride, things like that, and they have a lot of experience, and they speak to it's just different. You just don't know until it happens. Was it like that with you? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think I experienced too much of like the UFC jitters. It's probably. Um, I mean, I, you definitely feel like it's the next level because in terms of like the production quality and just the organization, it's just the next level. It's way more professional than any other organization. Uh, they're just very just on point with everything. It's very well organized. It's very fluid. So, I mean, they do a great job, the, the UFC, of taking care of their guys, you know. So I feel like it's the next level, but at the end of the day, it's just another fight too. Exactly, and you're going to go in there and perform. And, you know, uh, your opponent, uh, he lost that fight. I believe it was a second-round TKO. And... Um, I think that was his third loss in the UFC, you know, and that that would probably sting a little bit to know that that was the guy that you would have, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think of. it was, my, I thought it was only his second loss in the UFC, but um, he, yeah, you know, I was training really hard for that fight. I was training, he was a leg lock expert, mm -hmm. so I was training leg locks all the time, all the time, and maybe that actually had something to do with my Achilles tear, because if you're always going for ankle locks and Achilles locks, you're putting pressure on the Achilles tendon, maybe it had something to do with me rupturing my Achilles, I, who, who knows for sure, but I felt pretty confident in defending all the leg locks, so it would have been a great fight for me to maybe show off more of my stand-up skills, too. Well, exactly, and that's something that I was going to ask you about. Starting in Muay Thai, uh, obviously, you know, you're striking is on point. Um, how long did you train in Muay Thai for uh, when you first started? Were you a young fellow when you got into it? or? Yeah, well, actually, I started in martial arts when I was older, when I was like 21 years old, when I was in university. So I probably got into the game a little bit later than most. But once I started, I just fell in love with it. You know, I knew it was for me. Uh, I, I All my friends, you know, were involved with, with martial arts. Uh, eventually, it just attracts like really good people, really cool, laid back, humble people, you know, because when you're training every day and you're getting your butt kicked it's going to humble you so there's not not too many egos in in martial arts there are there are still a few but there's not too many well you i'll tell you something that i found that i really uh, it, it impressed me was there was always uh, with a lot of fighters a story of maybe being bullied as a kid or something like that and when they did get into mixed martial arts the respect and the discipline mm -hmm. that they got from that was was huge. It was life changing, and you could see by the way that they treat others. Um, you know, did you have that sort of a thing getting in the gym, and all of a sudden the discipline and and the respect that was given really make a big difference? Yeah, I think for me the the discipline was always there with training. Like I've always, I'm always like I like routine, I like structure, I like repetition, I like doing all the same thing over and over again. So for me that was. It was a natural fit for, for training because with training there's a lot of repetition and repetition is the key to mastery. So I was great with all the repetition, but um, in terms of like the respect and discipline, 100%, uh, I was introduced to one of my, my mentors, my main instructor, Paul, Paul Abel, and uh, he ended up moving to a place called Prince Edward Island and I came out here and I thought it was a great move. I'm very, very happy out here and, I, you know, you learn, I find I learn just as much on the mats and I can apply what I learn on the mats to outside, you know, outside yeah. the academy in the real world. You know, just the way you treat people doesn't doesn't matter who they are. You know, just the way you respect. You know, just right. respecting those around you and just taking it to the, to the next level. You know, I think martial arts really ingrains that, and in everybody that trains is just respecting everybody. No, growing up in Canada, Jason, and I was a hockey player. Did you play hockey? 
Uh, I put on the skates a few times, but I was never really huge into hockey. Well, I just had to ask that. That's that's a question for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you've got you've got a, a ways to go. How long do you uh, expect to be out with the injury before you're able to really, you know, slowly work your way back into the training? Yeah, the Achilles tendon rupture is a very serious injury just because it takes a long time to recover. And if you come back too early, you risk re-rupturing it again. So you might be feeling good at the three-month mark once you get the cast off. But then if you start hard training again, then bam, you re-ruptured it and you're back to step one again. So uh, from what I've read and the surgeons I've talked to, it's six months before you return to the sport. So six months before you even begin uh, training again, you know, you're going to be right. walking with a limp for at least three months. Uh, right now, I can't even put any weight on my leg at all. So it's going to be a long time in terms of the recovery. And unfortunately, I won't be able to train jujitsu, Muay Thai, wrestling for, I think we're looking at at least five, six months. And I'm going to have to do other things. I'll get into cycling. I'll swim. Swimming's great too. It's not really hard on your body. Uh, so I just got to find other things to, to keep me busy and there's, a, there's always other ways to train. I think this year's not going to be so much about the physical training. This year's going to be more about the, the mental training. Right. And I mean, we, we both know that in the fight game, you know, some people say 90%. I honestly, I think, you know, once the training and the skills there, the fights are 95 plus percent mental. And, uh, you know, that's something that you can work on and the, and the confidence, you know, for sure. Uh, but knowing, I mean, you look at Dominic Cruz and he suffered just exactly what you're speaking to, the sense of trying to come back a little bit too quick and, you know, bam, two ACLs. Yeah. And then again, you know, that, that's something that I'm sure you've learned from just watching, you know. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, with Dominic Cruz, he's got an ACL reconstruction. So it's actually the same amount of recovery time that I have to go through. It's about six months to recover and then you start your training again. So it's a long time that you're, you're, you're off for. So you want to make sure that you do it right and that you don't come back to the sport too early. And then you, you, you end up blowing the same injury out again. So you got to be super careful with stuff that you can re-rupture or re-tear with your ACL. You got to, you got to, you're the, my, body is basically the way that I'm able to make money you know so I have to make sure I'm, I'm keeping you know my body in tip top form so that's why I make sure I try to do not just strength and conditioning but also balance it out with yoga as well which which makes like this injury even harder to deal with because it's like I felt like I was already doing all the right things so I'm like well how the hell did I blow and rupture my Achilles tendon like it's it's hard for me to rationalize in my mind because I feel like okay I was doing the yoga I was doing the strength and conditioning I was training hard, but I don't think I was overdoing it. So it's hard when I try to analyze it and sit back and think like, oh, what could I have changed or what yeah. did I do wrong? Well, a lot of people, you know, they don't they don't realize actually the amount of training that you actually do, um, a two a day, a three a day, and how grueling it is on the body. And I personally, I, I'm amazed that we don't see more injuries uh, like yeah. that. And that's a testament to actually – how the sports progressed and, and we've learned that learning curve of giving your body a chance to heal and, and training smart as opposed to just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, making it hurt every time, right? Yeah, exactly. And I and nutrition too, your diet, like I'm pretty strict with my diet too. I'm always eating eating healthy. So I try to do be smart with my training and also my diet and my lifestyle choices. So and sometimes still freak injuries happen and I'm just gonna treat this as a, a freak injury. I've never had a serious injury like this before. So I mean thank you if you're involved with the sport long enough, something like this will eventually happen and I think maybe it was just my time. Well, yeah, a diet, that's an uh, excellent thing because you, you're uh, fighting at 155. You're a big, you're a big man. Um, mm -hmm. Is that an issue for you, the weight cut? Do you, or do you really, are you so dedicated with that diet that you maintain the healthy weight and you're able to, to come through it pretty, pretty easily? I feel like I always maintain like a healthy weight. Like I'm always usually walking around or around 175 so I'm never like too far off of my weight class I know guys that fight in my weight class they get up to like 185 
190 even, yeah. you know, if they're not training that much. But I'm always around 175, so I could always fight around two, three, two, three weeks notice. I can take a fight because I know I can make the, the weight, and I'm always training, so I'm always in relatively good shape. So for me, uh, my diet is, is always somewhat on track. I'm like, I'm never going to go off on a crazy bender, you know, and gain 20, 30, 40 pounds outside my, my weight class. I'm always pretty, pretty strict with my diet. And that's key to your mental strength because going through an injury, obviously, it can, you know, lead to a lot of different things. And one of them can be maybe doing a little bit of uh, overeating, yeah. you know. Oh, sure. It'd be so easy for me to, like, balloon up to 190, you know, even though I fight at 155. Like, that's why I'm trying to do what I can. You know, I, I can't do any exercises with my lower body, but I'm using, like, the TRX uh, trainer just to work on my upper body strength, a lot of just body weight stuff and just – doing research online, seeing what, what I can do at the same time, not trying to push it too far where I risk re-rupturing it. But even when you're injured, like, so if I can't use my legs at all, my lower body, I can still work my upper body. I can yeah. still go home, watch a video, watch tape, study technique. You know, there's other ways of training. Now, do you have, obviously, it's, it's you've got a little ways to go before you get back in the cage. Um what what are your plans when you when you do get back? Obviously, you're going to want to get in there as soon as possible. Do you have mm -hmm. uh, anybody in mind? Is that just something that is a yeah, little too far? Yeah, in mind because it's just so far away. Like yeah. I'm hoping that by the end of the year, like late November, December, that I'll be ready. But it all depends on how the physiotherapy goes, the rehab goes. You know, I'm I'm less than two weeks out post op, so after the surgery, I'm less than two weeks out right now. Uh, there's so much stuff that needs to be done. I, I mean, I, I can't really say until I'm starting my rehab and seeing how the recovery goes. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I'm excited to see you uh, compete. I, I really, uh, especially watching tape on you, um, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I think yeah, that I think the weight class is, is perfect for you. I think that you you have the ability to get in there and make, make some noise. Um, and I've got to ask you, and you don't have to. You don't have to answer the question, but um, no. you know we've got we've got let's the Aldo McGregor fight. Everybody's yeah. talking about it. it's it's a giant giant fight, yeah, world dude. tour for God's sakes, right? These guys yeah, are going all over. Too. How do you feel about Conor McGregor? I mean, he says he's going to move up. He wants to take on Dos Anjos, right? He, yes, he wants yeah, to Conor take care of Say something like that. Why is he? He's a great theatrician. Well, it's amazing because he never stops. I've never seen someone uh, be on all the time. He's always yeah. on. Do yeah. you think, now looking at looking at Jose Aldo, I've watched him fight uh, guys since the early, early days of WEC. I'm watching and I'm wondering, is this getting in his head? Now, with your fight game, is that something that you deal with? Do you try to get in your opponent's head? Or no. For me, it's like not about that at all. You know, when I go into a fight, I'm actually just like battling myself. You know, it's like it's about doing the right techniques, what, what you're going to do. If you can execute your strategy and your game plan, it doesn't matter what they're going to do. You should be focused on what you're going to do. With Aldo McGregor, I think Aldo's not going to be affected by all the uh, – the mental talk i think it's good that mcgregor goes in there with 100 percent confidence because when you go into a fight you should be confident that you have the skills to win so i think mcgregor is going to go in there thinking that he has the skills to win and that he can win but when he i don't think he's fought a guy with jose aldo's uh skill set yet like i don't think i don't think he's going to take him down uh in terms of stand-up they might be fairly evenly Match McGregor's a little bit more unorthodox, and he's a southpaw. And I haven't seen Jose Aldo fight too many southpaws, so I'm not sure how much that's going to throw him off. But it'll be interesting to say. I, w I definitely wouldn't count McGregor out, though. I mean, he's going in there 100% confident. He's got a, a lot of finishes in the UFC. Uh, you know, he got his title shot, and he's going to make the UFC a, a ton of money, so they want him in there. Well, you know that. I mean, the guy's able to sell out soccer stadiums yeah. in Ireland. I mean, and it's huge. And as a southpaw, he does have that lead straight left, you know, to fire down a pipe. And yeah. he's got that liver kick as well. Yeah. Uh, but he's yeah. got that leg hanging out there. We know what Jose Aldo can do with leg kicks. So that's what I'm waiting to see. Yeah, I just – I don't think – 
Jose Aldo is going to try to take him down. I just think that Jose will stand with him. And if he stands with him, I think McGregor does have the power to finish anybody in that division. So he could catch him with, you know, a straight, straight left down the pipe. Um, McGregor's pretty, pretty dynamic too. It's just that McGregor's got to watch out for Jose Aldo's kicks. You know, he's got pretty devastating kicks. So I wonder how uh, McGregor's going to, if he's going to be looking to check that, if he's going to be looking to take him down. I, I don't know. It's a very interesting fight, and uh, I'm excited to watch it. I am too. And you know what? I, I the UFC is getting bigger and bigger. The promotions are getting, uh, you know, bigger. And you're right in the mix of it. And you know, obviously. Having this time off, you are using it to your advantage and you're strengthening the mental side, you're keeping focus, you're probably helping out a lot of guys in the gym, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I sit in a, a chair like that, that pivots and swivels, and I just hold pads and just, you know, call out combinations and stuff like that. And we always have, uh, you know, guys and girls uh, coming up fights like at the end of uh next month we got two of our fighters uh greg and kirsty they got fights uh, coming up so there's always people fighting out of our gym so there's always people going through training camps so i'm going to be there i'm going to watch the rounds i'll i'll shout out uh you know just hints give them some tips and stuff like that and if i see something i'll let them know so yeah we're we got a strong team here everybody watches out for each other and there's a lot of support on the prince edward island here in canada before I let you go, Jason, I have to ask you, what was your favorite fight that you've been in that was maybe the toughest, but where you came out feeling, you know, very empowered by your performance? Uh, the fight where I felt most empowered would definitely be my UFC debut because in my mind, I was just so happy to be in the UFC and then to come out with a first round TKO finish in my UFC debut in Vancouver, Canada was like unreal. It was like a dream come true. So when that happened, it was probably, you know, the happiest I've ever been in, in my career at that point. Yeah, I kind of thought that that would be it, honestly. And I, and I, I I'm happy for you, Jason. I, I only see good things in your future and you have Thank the you. mental strength. Uh, I can see that, that this is going to make you a better fighter. Um, mm -hmm. And, man, it's been an honor to have you come on and talk with us. Um, Thanks so much. I appreciate it, Dan. Any shout-outs you'd like to give up? Yeah, I just wanted to give a shout-out uh, just to a quick three three sponsors that the, even though I was injured, they still help support me. Uh, Xperior Financial, uh, Rhythm.net, and uh, Penn Warden uh, Jewelers. They, they still supported me even though uh, I had to pull out of the fight and got injured. So I want to give uh, a big shout-out and thank you to those sponsors as well as... Um, you can check me out at www.jasonsago.com, S-A-G-G-O, and you can follow me on uh, Twitter at Twitter uh, uh, at Jason Sago and uh, Instagram at uh, Jason Sago. And also a big shout out to my girlfriend who's been helping me uh, with everything, you know, around the house. Like it's tough when you can't move around. I, I can't put any weight on my legs. So she's been she's been great with uh, everything and just just being there for me. And I can't even drive. They took away my license. So she's been driving, driving me around and stuff. So she's been a great support. Wow. That is you know what? That's a blessing, right? Um, yeah. And what, what gym are you training out of? Uh... Yeah, it's called Wolfram MMA. Yeah. It's in uh, Prince, Prince Edward Island, Canada. My head coach, Paul Abel, got Matt McGrath teaching the, the wrestling, Lenny and Morgan helping with the striking. Uh, just a solid bunch uh, of people here. They're training uh, young guys and girls. And then, you know, just a a anyone and everyone's welcome here. You know, they have people that choose to compete in the sport it's also people who just come here and want to learn and just have fun get a good workout in so we'll turn uh, mma is our gym and you could uh, check out our school website at gracypei.com we're actually we're getting so busy here we got to upgrade locations we're moving to a larger facility actually at the end of this month because there's just no space left on the mat so you could come check us out in our uh, new facility located in charlottetown Awesome, and it doesn't help to have a UFC fighter yeah. in the gym, right? Yeah, that, that's always good, but, you know, it's it's the team that brought me here. You know, I couldn't have done it with the, the, the team members here and the coaches. that They gave me the skills. They're there. They're sweating with me. They're, I've been cut, you know, bloody. We, we, we both give me – I had a black eye like three weeks ago, and then, you know, you give your friend a black eye, and everyone's just, <laughs> you know – 
just helping each other out, training hard, and at the end of the day, it's all about respect. Well, you know what, Jason? I really appreciate the time. Man, I'm looking forward to seeing you compete. Um, and best wishes, man. I hope you heal up fast. Thank you. So do I. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Uh, hey, when you get back in, yeah. I, I got to get the interview after the 100%. fight or before the fight. I, I've got to get it because this is a story that I really, uh, I really yeah. feel. Let's do one yeah, before and after. After, you know, I'm fully uh, recovered from the injury. I'll let you know how my training's going if I'm back to 100%, and then we'll, we'll do one after I get the next win. Mm, I will hold you to that, my friend. <laughs> right on. Thank you so much, Jason. It was a great time. Thanks so much. Right. Have a good one. You too.